Finding the equation of the regression line helps us to make predictions. Today, we'll see the point predictions and the coefficient of determination R squared. Let's go back to the data of the absences X and grades Y, which are reproduced here and together with the calculations that we have already performed. So sum of X, sum of X squared, sum of Y, sum of Y squared, sum of XY, X bar, Y bar. And finally, the equation of the regression line. So this is a recall of what we have done. So the Y predicted is Y hat equals 102.483 minus 3.622X. And so because the slope is negative, this is a negative correlation. Now, there are generally a couple of questions that are asked to you. One of them is to simply draw the sample regression line on the scatter plot. So I have reproduced the scatter plot for X and Y. And to draw the regression line, we simply give two values, possibly within the range of the X values. So in here I gave X equal 3, and when I substitute X equal 3, it's a Y hat, is 102.483 minus 3.3622 multiplied by 3. That gave me an, a Y hat value of rounded 91.6. And when I gave a second value of x equal, I tried 14. The highest value for x is 15, the highest number of absences. And similarly, y hat is going to be 102.483 minus 3.622 multiplied by 14. That will give me a value of 51.8. Now, Representing these points, I represent them with um, in red, just to show it's the ones from the sample regression line. So if x is 3, y is 91, 3 and 91, so roughly here, and 14 and 51.8, so the roughly like that. And then I can use a ruler and join the two points. And so this is what I obtained and I drew it in red for the sample regression line or line of best fit using the principle of least squares. The other thing that can be done with the mm, equation of the regression line is for a start some point predictions, which are basically if they give you an X value, what value is predicted using the equation of the line or that, that X value? So, for instance, for predict the final grade for a student who had 10 days of absences. So, the 10 in this case is the given value X0, which in this case is a value that is not in the data set. We didn't have the value in the data set there are only 2, 5, 6, 8, 9, 12, 15. So this is a, a prediction. So when x0 is equal 10, simply plug it in into the equation of the regression line. So y hat equals 102.483 minus 3.622 times 10. And you'll get in total a value of 66.26. And so roughly the predicted final grade is a final grade of 66%. Now make sure when you do point prediction predictions or any type of predictions using a, a regression line, be sure to give values that are roughly close to the sample values. So in here, the sample value goes from 2 to 15. So to have a valid predictions, we should give x values that are in this range or very close to it. In fact, if we gave, for instance, a, an x value of 35. So let's go in here and see what, what can happen if you do something that is sort of not allowed. So if we gave an X value of 35, well, 35 absences, it's a possible number of absences. It's a bit extreme, but it's way out of our data range. So if I went to the regression line and calculated the y hat by doing 102.483 minus 3.622 times 35, I would get a final grade, a predicted final grade of negative 24. So the person is 24% below zero and so this is sort of doesn't make any sense and it's the result of doing an invalid prediction outside the range of the x values.
The coefficient of determination, r squared, is the ratio between the explained variation, which is the sum of the, the deviations between the predicted y value and the average y value, to the total variation, which is the sum of the deviations between the observed value and the mean y value. This is basically the formula for R squared, explain the variation over total variation. It's generally given as a percentage. It can simply be found by squaring R, but that's sort of the reasoning formula. It measures, it's important you understand what it measures. It measures the variation of the dependent variable, so the Y variable, that is, so the variation that is explained by our model, so the regression line and the independence variable. So as an example, if we compute it for the absences and grades, R was minus 0 0.9442, R squared is squaring the minus 0.9442 we'll get 80.8915 or 89%, which means that we have a pretty good model because 89% of the variation in grades can be explained by the, our model. So our model seems to be quite reliable. Now I have, um, I show you how to calculate the explained variation and the total variation on an example. This is just to clarify it. You don't really have to calculate it in practice, but just so that you can see what we mean. So in here, take it with a grain of salt because this is simply to show you. You probably will not have to use it. So I took simple data, simpler data for the regression pairs x, y, so 110. 2, 8, 3, 12, 4, 16, and 5, 20. n is equal to 5, and we already did um, all the calculations for you. So this is uh, you, this is, can be a good practice, I guess. So this is the equation of the regression line. 4.8 is the y-intercept plus 2.8, the slope, so indicates positive correlation, x. And r is, uh, again, indicating a strong positive correlation, 0.919. Just I drew it for just one value. For each x value, there are basically two corresponding values. One is the observed y value that is given to you, 10. And the other one is the predicted y hat from the regression line. So in here, if this is your y bar line and this is your point x, so the predicted y value can be calculated from the equation of the regression line. So simply by plugging in x equal 1. So 4.8 plus 2.8 times 1 is 7.6. I drew the 7.6. So I drew the y hat and I drew the y. And so basically, you see, you have these two quantities. This vertical quantity in here is the difference between the 7.6 is your predicted value. So it's the difference between the predicted and the mean value. That represents the explained variation. While 10 minus 7.6 or y minus y hat represents the unexplained deviation. And if we add these two up, we have the total deviation, which is the observed y minus the y mean, the average, y, y bar. And so now in here, I calculated all the predicted y value by simply substituting into the equation values of x. And so I can reproduce them in here. I'll do that in red. They are 7.6. So I reproduced all my y hat values, and then I calculated y bar, which is simply the sum of the y values, 10 plus 8 plus 12 plus 16 plus 20 divided by 5, that gives us 13.2. And then I had sort of fun, in quotation marks, computing the total variation, which is the sum of observed minus mean squared, the explained variation, sum of predicted minus mean y value squared, and the unexplained, which is the sum of observed minus predicted squared. So in here are my observed values, in here are my mean values with the 13.2, here are the sum of the squares is 92.8, here are my y hat values from here, seven all calculated, minus your y bar values constant, and those are the sums. And then the unexplained variation is the observation subtracted the predicted. Each observation by each predicted, so the unexplained variations is the smallest one. And then mathematically, the total variation must be equal, the explained variation plus the unexplained variation. Here it is formula-wise, and here is the check, substituting 92.8 equals 78.4 plus 14.4.
So just, you know, to show you what these quantities are, you probably will not have to use them, but I think it helps in understanding. Thanks for listening.